O aming Panginoon, patuloy naming kinikilala ang inyong kabanalan. Patuloy naming kinikilala, O Diyos, that we are nothing but unrighteousness before your sight. We keep on sinning every day. And the Bible is just right in saying that you are the God who has anger every day. Why is that so? Because all people in the world, even your people, keep on sinning every day. If it were not by the blood of Jesus Christ, we would have long been consumed by your wrath and by your anger. Oh, we praise your holy name, O oh God, because of the free grace of forgiveness and pardon and justification by grace through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we do not grow weary in heralding, in thundering this same old, old gospel story over and over again. It's salvation by grace and by grace alone, in Christ alone, received by faith alone, for the glory of God alone. We exalt your holy name, O God, and let it be that today people will be saved. Thank you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, review po natin ang unang dalawang paragraphs ng chapter 7 of our Confession of Faith. Now, if you notice, there are only three chapters. Uh, no, no. There are only three paragraphs of chapter 7. There are only three paragraphs of chapter 7 and it's an introduction to the covenant of God with men. Why is that so? Why are there only three paragraphs in chapter 7 when there are supposed to be four or five? It is because the 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith deliberately omitted some paragraphs from the Westminster Confession of Faith that expound in a more detailed way about the doctrine of covenant of works. Covenant of works is really spelled out in chapter 7 in the Westminster Confession of Faith. Of course, our TMC students know about it, what is covenant of work, but it's telling that our 1689 have deleted considerable portion of the covenant of work because until now, it's being disputed as to whether the covenant of God with Adam could rightly be called covenant of work. Now, sa ating TMC, uh, there, there were passionate discussions about it. So, there is a necessity and it's really timely that it's now our lesson in our Sunday school. But there is necessity to study the whole matter in detail so as to have an objective view about the matter. Now, suffice it to say, uh, the majority of us couldn't relate what Pastor Jeremiah is talking right now. Probably you will be asking, what is Pastor Jeremiah talking about? What's that covenant of work thing? Well, meron pong discussion sa mga mag-aaral ng TMC about covenant of work. And I'm just taking this opportunity to inform them that there is considerable debate going on for hundreds of years now as to whether it would rightly be called covenant of work. It's a covenant, no doubt about it, but is it a covenant of work? So that we will evaluate. And uh, I am just comfortable to say that it's Adamic covenant, but to call it covenant of work, well, we have to hear all sides first before finally getting into our conclusion in the spirit of love and gentleness. Okay, uh, starting with paragraph number one, at tinalakay po natin ito last Sunday, ang agwat ng Diyos at tao ay napakalayo. Napakalayo ng agwat ng Diyos at tao. Kahit bago pa man nahulog si Adan at saka si Eve sa kasalanan, malayo pa rin ang agwat ng Diyos at ng tao. Yes, they had perfect fellowship, but there was still this creator-creature distinction. Ang Panginoon ay napakalayo ang agwat, lalong-lalo na nung nahulog ng tao sa kasalanan, naputol ang lahat ng ugnayan ng Diyos at ng tao. 
So bagamat may isip na nilikha ay dapat siyang sumunod sa kaniyang may likha sa kaniyang sarili ay hindi niya kayang makaabot ng gantimpala ng buhay. Now these are all covenantial language. Kaya nga ang covenant of work ay maraming nag nag uh, re-reject sa ganoong concept because one can never attain or earn whether in the state of innocence or in the state of fallenness one can never earn righteousness and life as a result of one's performance so hindi natin kayang maabot ang gantimpala ng buhay eternal life can never be earned even life after a supposed probationary period it can it can never earn by any of man's performance. Tanging sa kusang pagpapakababa ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng tipan, maaring maganap ang ugnayan ng Diyos. And last Sunday, ay sinabi po natin na the folly of man is to think of God as slightly better than ourselves. Slightly greater than ourselves. Bakit ang mga tao ay talagang body-body lang ang pagtingin nila sa Diyos? In the way they talk, tinulungan ako ni God. Nagpasalamat ako ni God. Para bang body-body lang ang Diyos. Parang tinulungan ako ni Albert or ni Jordan. Hindi talaga nila masabi sabi, tinulungan ako ng Panginoon. Because he's, he's greater, far, far greater than what we can ever think or imagine. So we have to be very careful with our language. God is not slightly better than us. God is far, far greater than what we can ever think or even imagine. That's pride na iniisip natin ang Diyos na body-body natin siya. Yes, He is our friend, but He is our Lord. He is the King seated upon His throne. And there is no way for us to reach Him but for God alone to condescend and reach to our level and reach us out. Paragraph 2, at tinapos natin ito last time, yamang ang tao ay nahulog sa pagkakasala at napailalim sa sumpa ng kautusan ng Diyos, kinalugdan pa rin ng Diyos na gumawa ng isang tipan ng biyaya. Now how I wish that we could study this slowly, mga TMC students, kailan po nagumpisa yung Covenant of Grace, it was not even called a covenant in Genesis 3.15. It was a declaration of grace. And ang kausap ng Panginoon ay hindi po ang tao, hindi po si Eve, kundi si Satanas. But it's an indirect implication that there is a promise of grace because it was given upon the hearing of Adam and Eve. Genesis 3.15, please turn there. Naputol ang ugnaya ng tao at ng Diyos dahil sa kasalanan. At pagkatapos, naputol ang ugnaya ng Diyos at ng tao dahil sa kasalanan. And therefore, ang kamatayan ay nakapasok na sa kanilang sistema. Death has now be begun to consume us. Uh, ang kondisyon ng buhay ng tao before the fall is, was rather, was free from death, walang kasalanan, walang kamatayan. Yes, it was mortal, it was capable of dying. Pero hindi talaga pariho sa life after the fall kasi ang death ay nandun na. It's mortal, but death is already there. Ang life before the fall, it was also capable of dying, but death was not yet there. So hindi pwedeng bigyan natin ng exact uh, parallel it's not the same. The other one has death. The other one doesn't have death still. So, hindi talaga pwedeng ituring na magkapariho. Genesis 3.15, tingnan po natin ang declaration ng grace ng Panginoon. Now, marami po sa mga manunulat ay tinatawag po itong covenant of grace. Pero, para sa atin, it's just a declaration of grace. 
promise of grace. Promise of grace. And it is implied, greatly implied, kasi upon the hearing of Adam and Eve. Pero ang kausap ng Panginoon dito, hindi po si Adam at saka si Eve. Si Satanas ang kausap. Ang ahas ang kausap. Grabe no, naputol ang ugnayan ng Diyos at ng tao at may ugnayan na ang, si Satanas at ang tao, ang babae. But right then and there, merong promise of grace ang Panginoon. Hindi niya directly binigay kay Adam and Eve, but upon their hearing. Ang sabi po dito, maglalagay ako sa iyo. Sino itong sa iyo? Si Satanas. Ang ahas po ito. Maglalagay ako sa iyo at sa babae ng pagkapuot sa isa't isa at sa iyong binhi at sa kaniyang binhi. Ito ay dudurog ng iyong ulo at ikaw ay dudurog ng kaniyang sakong. Now, the question is, was it a covenant? The answer is, explicitly, it was not a covenant but it was a Declaration of grace, the promise of grace. But implicitly, it was really a covenant. It was really a covenant. The word covenant is not mentioned here, but indirectly, it was a covenant. Now, ano po ang definition ng covenant? A covenant is an oath-bound promise administered in blood. Ulitin ko po. A covenant is an oath-bound promise administered in blood. Kaya nga ang Adamic covenant, it is a covenant undoubtedly, but is it really a covenant of work? Pag-aaralan po natin yan. Because it's a unique covenant. Unang-una, it was not an oath-bound promise. Katulad ng ginawa kay Abraham na talagang mayroong blood na cut. Ang covenant kasi ay galing sa word na birith which means to cut. Meron talagang kinat na flesh. It's an off-bound promise administered in blood. Now, ang Genesis 3.15, was it an off-bound promise administered in blood? The answer is yes. Tapos na po yung blood. Tinahin na lang Panginoon yung, or tinahin na ba, or magtatahi pa lang ang Panginoon ng kasuutan. Magtatahi pa lang. So, gagawin pa lang yung cut, cutting o yung blood. The context of the clothing is immediately after the promise was given. So, a covenant is an off-bound promise administered in blood. So, there is really blood in Genesis 3.15. Directly, it's not mentioned as a covenant, but if you will really study, it's really a covenant because there's an off. And there's blood. It's an off-bound promise administered in blood. Now, para sa mga TMC students, what about the covenant of redemption? My blood ba? My blood. Ang sabi nga, ang description nga ngay Jesus is, He was slain even before the foundation of the world. So my blood na po yung covenant of redemption between the Father and the inter-Trinitarian. I mean, hindi po ninyo, sorry, hindi po ninyo ito maunawaan sa mga ordinary members, pero sa mga nag-aaral ng TMC, ay, uh, this is for them. A covenant is an off-bound promise administered in blood. Lahat po ng covenant sa Biblia ay merong dugo. And that, that's, what, that, that's what makes the Adamic covenant a very unique covenant because it doesn't fall in any of the category. I hope that that is already clear enough. Well, we'll have more on that, mga kapatid, sa ating pag-aaral sa TMC. Okay? So, ang Panginoon ay nagbigay ng pangako at inari ni Adam at saka ni Eve yun na pangako. In fact, the very response of Adam is, and he named his wife Eve because she was going to be the father, uh, the mother of many. Eh, talagang nangako ang Panginoon ng ng redemption para sa kanila. The declaration of grace, the declaration of promise. 
Second sentence, dito ay malaya niyang inialok ang buhay at kaligtasan sa makasalanan sa pamamagitan ni Heso Kristo. Going back to Genesis 3.15, maglalagay ako sa iyo at sa babae ng pagkapuot sa isa't isa. So, meron ng uh, naging magkaugnay na si Eve at saka si Satanas dahil tinalikuran nila ang Diyos. They disobeyed God, so they are now connected with Satan. But right then and there, the Lord intervened. Maglalagay ang Panginoon <clears throat> at sa babae ng pagkapuot sa isa't isa. So, pinutol ng Diyos right then and there ang ugnayan na nabuo between Eve and Satan. It's an act of grace. It's an act of grace. And then meron pa, at sa iyong binhi at sa kanyang binhi. So it's talking about the seed. At pinaliwanag po ito ni Paul sa Galatians na ang binhi ay walang iba kundi si Jesus. It's singular. The fulfillment is in Christ. At sa iyong binhi at sa kanyang binhi. At ito ang dudurog ng iyong ulo at ikaw ay dudurog ng kanyang sakong. So blood is also mentioned there. Di ba? Dudurog yung ulo at dudurog ng sakong. It's a covenant. Because it's an off-bound promise administered in blood. And later, talagang merong blood, merong flesh na kinat upon the clothing of Adam and Eve. <clears throat> Napakalayo ng agwat ng Diyos at ng tao. Hindi na kayang abuti ng tao ang Diyos. Sa biyaya ng Diyos, nang himasok pa rin siya in the form of a covenant. And I believe that the The first official covenant, the first word covenant is mentioned officially in, in, in his covenant with Noah. But here in Genesis 3.15, it overshadows everything. So it's the declaration of grace, covenant of grace in a sense. Nag-uumpisa na po sa Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Hinihingi ng Diyos na sila'y sumampalataya kay Kristo upang maligtas. Kanya ring ipinangako na ibibigay ang banal na espiritu sa lahat ng kanyang hinirang sa buhay na walang hanggan upang sila'y magpusa at magkaroon ng kayang sumampalataya. And if you were there last Sunday, ay natutunan natin mula sa morning sermon na ang pananampalataya ay hindi po nanggagaling sa ating sarili. Kaya hindi natin ito pwedeng ipagmayabang. Ang pananampalataya ay hindi nanggagaling sa ating sarili. Ano ba ang mapuproduce natin? Ang mapuproduce po natin ay kasalanan. Kasalanan. Instinctly, natively, we cannot produce faith in our hearts. We only produce sin, doubt, and unbelief. We mock the promise of God. Papaano nagkaroon ng pananampalataya ang ating puso? Well, the Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, And this, referring to faith, and this, this faith, is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Yes, it also goes back to grace. That's also true. But the context, yung and this is not of yourselves, that really refers to the immediate word na sinundan. And this faith is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Hindi po natin may pagmamayabang ang ating pananampalataya sapagkat ito po ay kaloob na nanggagaling sa Diyos. Okay, paragraph number three. And we hope to finish it this morning. We have 20 minutes for that. We'll end by 10.15. Number three. Ang tipa ng Diyos ay ipinahayag sa Ibanghelyo. Ito na yung pinaka-sukdulan, pinaka-peak. Marami kasing covenants eh. Uh, Nawahi covenant, Abrahamic covenant, uh, what's next? Musai covenant, and then we have Davidic covenant, and the new covenant. Now all of these covenants are overshadowed by Genesis 3.15, and that is the covenant of grace. Ang pinaka-sukdulan is the new covenant. Mar may isang paragraph po na na tinanggal sa 1689 sa Westminster Confession of Faith dahil nga sa sinabi ko na hindi nagkakasundo yung ating mga Reformed Forefathers patungkol sa Covenant of Work. 
Ang tipanang Diyos ay ipinahayag sa Ibanghilyo. Una kay Adan. Kaya nga ang gospel po, nagumpisa na po ito sa Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Una kay Adan, sa pangako ng kaligtasan, sa pamamagitan ng binhi ng babae. Di ba binasa natin? Maglalagay ako sa iyo at sa babae ng pagkapuot sa isa't isa. At sa iyong binhi at sa kanyang binhi. So, sinasabi ng Panginoon sa ahas, ngayon, friends kayo ni, ah, ni Eve, tinukso mo siya eh. Magkaugnay na kayo. Tinukso mo siya eh. Tinalikuran niya ako at pinili ka niya. Pinili ka ni Adan. Si Adam din, kumain. Deliberate sinning. It was really the sin of Adam. Pinili niya kayo. Ah, pinili ka niya. Kinausap ng Panginoon yung ahas. Pero ngayon, Puputulin ko yung ugnayan na ka, 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 kabubuo lang ngayon. Maglalagay ako ng pagkapuot between you and the woman. And furthermore, hindi lang po yan, meron pang seed na ipinangako. And between your seed and her seed, si Jesus Christ po ang seed na ito. So sa pamamagitan ng seed, meron pong redemption. Meron pong kaligtasan. Okay? sa pamamagitan ng binhi ng babae at pagkatapos ay nagpatuloy hanggang sa ganap na pagpapahayag ng kaligtasan sa bagong tipan. Anong ibig sabihin ito? Uh, Romans 16.25 hanggang sa 27. I hope that I will be able. Okay? Uh, medyo mahirap na pag-aaral ito. Nangako ang Panginoon na ipapadala niya ang binhi na magtutubos at magliligtas sa mga makasalanan. Ang binhi, ang redeemer. Naunawaan ba ni Adan at saka ni Eve kaagad ang meaning noon? Yes or no? Naunawaan nila yung binhi? Naunawaan ba nila that it will still take thousands of years bago pa dumating yung binhi na yon? Yes or no? What do you think? Nung ipinangako sa Genesis 3.15 na ipapadala ang binhi, naunawaan pa ni Adam at saka ni Eve agad-agad na matutupad yun kay Christ? Hindi po. In fact, noong ipinanganak si Cain, si Cain ba yun? Yeah, si Cain. Noong ipinanganak si Cain, ano ang sabi ni Eve? Now ay... I receive a seed from the Lord. Tinawag ni Eve si Cain na seed. Baka ito na yung seed na ipinangako. Hindi niya alam na si Cain pala ay hindi seed of the woman, kundi seed of the serpent. Kasi throughout the ages, there is really a battle between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Si Cain pala ay hindi po seed of the woman. Akala ni Eve na si Cain na yung fulfillment sa ipinangako na binhi. It turns out na seed of the serpent pala si Cain. Hanggang sa ipinanganak si Abel. At si Abel ay talagang there was a battle between Cain and Abel. Hanggang sa pinatay ni Cain si Abel. Oh, seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. There are only two groups of people in the whole world. Before and now. The seed of the woman versus the seed of the serpent. So, hindi po yun naunawaan ka agad ni Adam at saka ni Eve na si Jesus pala ang fulfillment doon. In fact, napaka-vague para sa kanila. Pero papaano sila nanampalataya nung hindi nila naunawaan yung identity ng seed? Well, nanampalataya sila sa pangako ng tagapagligtas. And because of that, ligtas sila. They believed in the promise of a Redeemer. Hindi nga lang nila alam kung Sino at paano, but they believed it. And of course, uh, there was blood. There was blood involved. Okay, Romans chapter 16, verse 25 to 27. Ang sabi dito, At ngayon sa Diyos na may kapangyarihang magpatibay sa inyo ayon sa aking ibanghelyo at sa pangangaral ni Yesu Kristo ayon sa pahayag ng hiwaga 
na inilihim sa napakahabang panahon. Can you imagine that since Genesis 3.15? Question nila palagi kung sino ba yung seed na yan? Hiwaga sa napakahabang panahon. Sino ba talaga yung seed na yan? Hindi po yan nakita ng mga prophets ng malinaw. Nakita nila ang patungkol sa Misaya. Hindi talaga nila nakita. Ang pinaka-close na nakakita, mga kapatid, si John the Baptist. Kaya nga, tinawag siya ni Jesus na the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. Old Testament dispensation pa rin si John the Baptist. And yet, the least of the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Kasi kahit nakita ni John the Baptist si Jesus ng close, hindi pa rin niya naunawaan ng lubusan. Kaya ang pinaka-least sa New Covenant, tayo yon mas greater pa ang ating pangunawa kaysa kay John the Baptist na the greatest of the Old Testament prophet. Kasi meron na tayong ganap na pangunawa patungkol sa seed na ipinangako. Ang sabi dito, ayon sa pahayag ng hiwaga na inilihim sa napakahabang panahon, subalit nahayag na ngayon at sa pamamagitan ng mga kasulatan ng mga propeta, ay ipinakilala sa lahat ng mga bansa tungkol sa pagsunod sa pananampalataya ayon sa utos ng Diyos na walang hanggan. Sa iisang Diyos na marunong sa pamamagitan ni Yeso Kristo, sumakanyang kaluwalhatian, magpakailanman. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5. Ang sabi po dito, Sa unang sa naunang mga salinlahi ay hindi ito ipinaalam sa mga anak ng mga tao na gaya ngayon na ipinahayag na sa kaniyang mga banal na apostol at propeta sa pamamagitan ng espiritu. So it really remained a mystery for a very long time. And Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 the, the classic text on the divinity of Christ if we study Christology Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Noong unang panahon, ang Diyos ay nagsalita sa ating mga ninuno sa iba't ibang panahon at sa iba't ibang paraan sa pamamagitan ng mga propeta. Subalit sa mga huling araw na ito ay nagsalita siya sa atin sa pamamagitan ng anak na kaniyang itinalagang tagapagmana ng lahat ng mga bagay. Na sa pamamagitan din niya ay ginawa ang mga sanlibutan. Kita po sinalam po natin ito bago natin isummarize ang kabuuang tipan ng Diyos with humanity. Ang kaligtasan ng mga hinirang ay batay sa kasunduan ng ama at anak. Noong walang hanggang pasimula, I don't think, I think next Sunday ay kailangan pa natin itong i- i-expound a little bit more. So lumalabas na ang ating pag-aaral ngayon is just an overview of the covenant. Nagtamo ng buhay na walang hanggan ang mga naligtas mula sa lahi ni Adan sa pamamagitan lang ng biyaya na dulot ng tipang ito. Ang tao ay walang magawa upang maging katanggap-tanggap sa harapan ng Diyos batay sa mga kondisyon na ibinigay kay Adan nung siya ay di pa nagkakasala. Hindi talaga ginamit yung covenant of work sa paragraph na ito, although ginamit yung covenant of work sa chapter 19 and chapter 20. Okay? Nung nahulog ang tao sa kasalanan, Napakalayo ang agwat ng tao at ng Diyos. Hindi po kayang abutin ng tao ang Diyos. Ano man ang kanyang gagawin? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Ano bang pag-asa ng tao? Wala siyang pag-asa sa kanyang sarili. Ang tanging pag-asa ng tao ay ang Diyos mismo ang bumaba at magpakilala ng kanyang sarili. What was the very first reaction of man when he fell into sin? Ano ang pinaka-first reaction? Nagtago sila. Di ba? They hid from God. They saw their nakedness. Ang makasalanan pala, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, hindi mo yan maaasahan na lumapit sa Diyos sa kanilang sarili. 
ang mga makasalanan, wala na yung ibang gagawin, kundi tumakbo at tumakbo mula sa Diyos. Ayaw nila sa Diyos. Hanggang ngayon, ano ba ang paraan, ano ba ang pag-asa na ang tao ay mapalapit sa Diyos? Walang pag-asa siya sa kanyang sarili. Ang kanyang pag-asa is ang Diyos sa kanyang biyaya ay bumaba at abutin ang tao. Nakuha po natin, we did not love God first. He loved us. We love Him because He first loved us. So ang Panginoon, dahil nagtago na si Adam at saka si Eve, mula sa presensya ng Diyos, ang Diyos ay bumaba. Hinanap si Adam at saka si Eve, nasaan na kayo? Nagtago kami, dahil kami ay hubad. Sino ang nagsabi na kayo ay hubad? Ah, kinain ninyo ang ipinagbabawal na bunga. Kinain. So ang Diyos ang umabot sa kanila kasi nagtago na sila sa Panginoon eh. At habang nagtatago sila sa Diyos, nagtahi sila na sarili nilang damit, dahon. Ang ang tao, ipinagtatanggol niya ang kanyang kasalanan sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kabaitan ng good works. Wala po yan in the sight of God. Hubad pa rin yan sa harapan ng Diyos. So ang Panginoon ang bumaba at nakipagtipan well, indirectly, yes, it was a covenant, But he declared his grace upon the hearing of Adam and Eve. Pero ang direct na kausap ng Dios ay si Satanas. So hindi siya nakipagtipan kay Satanas. Of course, he declared war. He declared war. Pero indirectly, because it was upon the hearing of Adam and Eve, it was really a covenant because it was an oath-bound promise administered in blood. Blood is implied. Dudurog. Merong dudurog, durog. Tapos, sinuutan sila ng uh, damit mula sa balat ng hayop. At syempre, may dugo na ipinatulo po iyon. So, sa madaling sabi, may pangako ang Diyos, may tipa ng Diyos, pero hindi nila naunawaan kaagad. Nung ipinanganak si Cain, ay akala ni Eve na yun, po, yun na po yung seed na ipinangako, na redeemer, na dudurog sa ulo ni Satanas, pero hindi pa pala seed of the serpent pala si Cain. Well, si Abel is seed of the woman, pero pinatay ni Cain. At ilang hinirasyon pa ang dumaan bago ipinanganak si Seth, yung kapalit ni Abel. At nung ipinanganak si Seth, the same language, now, I received a seed from the Lord, kapalit ni Abel, because Cain, seed pa rin ang ginamit. So it's really ang indication na nagtiwala talaga sila sa seed. Yun ang kanilang pananampalataya. And after na nagkaanak si Seth, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. For how many generations, hindi irihis ang mga tao, wala talagang mananampalataya, maliban siguro kay Adam at saka kay Eve. In fact, yung... Pagiging mananapalataya ni Adam, pinagdidebatihan pa rin yan, ha? Si Pastor Steve, hindi naniniwala na si Adam was a believer. Charles Spurgeon believed that Adam was a believer. I also do believe that Adam was a believer. But ask Pastor Steve. No, he cannot say with all certainty kung ligtas ba si Adam or hindi. You see, it happens. Uh, magkakaiba ng pananaw. Both are aiming to be biblical. And I believe that Pastor Steve is biblical and Charles Spurgeon is biblical. But somehow, merong stand. Now I I believe that if that Adam was really a believer, because he named Eve Eve because she was going to be the mother of all the living, meaning to say mother of the seed. Naniwala siya sa seed. Pero panatag na ba si Adam at sa kasi Eve na si Seth yun na talaga yung seed? Ah, hindi pa, hindi nila naunawaan eh. Progressive revelation. And later, later, ah, nalaman natin na yung seed pala na yun ay dadaan sa binhi ni Eber. Hebreo. Di ba? The father of the Hebrews. Eber. So, sa dami-dami ng anak si Eber, later, naunawaan natin, hundreds of years, ay dadaan pala sa kay uh, Noah. Kay Noah. Sa dami-daming anak ni ni ano, ni Eber 
Adon, dadaan pala kay Noah yung seed. Eh, ilan bang anak meron si Noah? Him, uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Wala kay Ham at kay Japheth, doon pala dadaan kay Shem. They're from those Semitic Semites. Mga... And then, mula kay Shem, hundreds of years later, saan ba yung seed na yun? Napaka, napaka ano, trinase talaga yung kasaysayan. Sino yung seed na ipinangako? ay dadaan pala kay Abraham. So, upon your seed, the entire nation will be blessed. Abrahamic covenant, oath-bound promise, administered in blood. Nawahi covenant, oath-bound promise, administered in blood. May blood. And then from Abraham, ay ilan bang anak sa Abraham? Ilan po? Hindi po dalawa, nakasawa pa siya kay Kitura eh, pagkatapos namatay si Sarah. Di ba, inasawa niya si Kitura ni Abraham. Nakasawa siya ulit. Nang, nanganak pa siya ng mara. So, hindi pala baog si Abraham, no? Grabe, hindi pala baog si Abraham, pero it took him 100 years old bago lumabas si Isaac na kanyang anak. Pero after the death of Sarah, nagasawa siya kay Kitura, hindi pala baog si Abraham. Nak, nanganak pa siya ng marami Pero wala doon po yung seed. Hindi rin si Ishmael, kundi kay Isaac po yung seed. Now, hundreds of years later, meron pong dalawang anak si Isaac, si Eso at saka si Jacob. Wala kay Eso, kundi dumaan pala kay Jacob yung seed. Now, there were 12 tribes of Jacob. Wala po sa labing isa na yon andun kay Judah. Andun kay Judah. Hanggang sa fast forward natin, dumaan siya kay David. Hanggang sa fast forward natin in the fullness of time. Kailan po nangyari? Ipinanganak si Heso Kristo, the greater son of David. And now the revelation is complete. Hindi yun naunawaan ng mga people of old. Hindi nga naunawaan ng lubusan ni John the Baptist. He was the closest person to see the promised seed, but he did not fully understand the implication. And now, despite the lofty position of John the Baptist as the greatest of all the Old Testament prophet, we are better than John the Baptist. Yun ang sinasabi ng salita ng Panginoon. Mula mismo sa bibig ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. From Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, to the Davidic Covenant, and to the new covenant, the ultimate fulfillment of the promised seed, ay ipinahayag sa new covenant in the person of Jesus Christ. This is the blood of the new covenant. Overshadowing all of these covenants of promise is grace. Covenant of grace. So there was a prelude to all of these covenants. And the prelude is, it's all of grace. My dear brethren, it's all of grace. It's never by work. Ang kaligtasan, buhat noon pa man hanggang ngayon, it's all by grace. It's never by work. Well, that is as far as human understanding is concerned. Pero umatras po tayo. Bakit ang lahat ng mga ito ay nangyayari? Ah, meron palang inter-trinitarian agreement between the Father and the Son. Even before the foundation of the world, that the Father will give the Son people for Himself. Natutubusin niya sa kanyang sariling dugo. Kailan po nangyari yung inter-trinitarian covenant of redemption between the Father and Son? Was it an off-bound promise? Yes. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Psalm chapter 110, verse 3 and 4. Anong ibig sabihin ng priest? Mag-alay ng dugo. And Jesus Christ is slain even before the foundation of the world. So, what is a covenant? It's an oath-bound promise administered in blood. Was the relationship between Adam and God before the fall a sort of covenant? Uh, yes, it was a covenant. Dahil meron ding mga elements of a covenant doon. But it was never uh, to be put in exactly the same way as the covenant of redemption and the covenants of promise 
concerning the coming seed. It was an Adamic covenant. John Marie calls it the Adamic administration. But I simply call it the Adamic covenant. But never the covenant of work. Because uh, Adam can never earn life by work. We can never earn eternal life by our work. It's only by the grace of God. Anong mangyayari kung hindi sana nahulog si Adam at saka si Eve sa kasalanan? Anong, anong mangyayari? What would have happened kung hindi sila nahulog sa kasalanan? Well, life goes on. Di ba? Absent, absent ang death at that time. Life goes on. At least, that's all that we could say. We can never conjecture na kung hindi sila nahulog sa kasalanan, may earn nila yung, ano, yung higher permanent eternal life because man can never earn. At least, because death was absent, the absence of disobedience, the absence of sin, the absence of death, life will just go on. And they will still fill the earth because that's what the command is. Go and multiply. Life goes on. That's all that we can conjecture. But we can never go beyond that. That is already too far. And that is why considerable portions of the Westminster Confession of Faith were not included in the London Baptist Confession of Faith. Well, I hope that I have done justice to chapter 7 because this belongs in the realm of dogmatics, which is pag-aaralan po namin sa TMC. But suffice it to say that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the promised seed and we can never come to God apart from Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me, says Jesus. Napakalayo ng agwat ng taot ng Diyos for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Di mo kayang abutin ang Diyos. You can never earn righteousness by yourself. It is only through God condescending, bumaba at nakipagtipan sa katauhan ni Jesus Christ and what was the covenant? What was involved in the covenant? It's an off-bound promise that there is going to be redemption and salvation administered in blood. Well, Jesus Christ shed His blood at the cross of Calvary so that you and I will be saved. And so come to Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus Christ. Tanging kay Jesus lamang, meron kang kaligtasan at kapatawaran. Hindi sa pamamagitan ng good works mo. Na yang iniisip ng lahat ng mga tao dito sa mundo mula nung una hanggang ngayon, ang taong mayabang ay nagsasabing gumawa ng mabuti upang ikaw ay magligta, maligtas. Sundin mo ang sampung utos upang ikaw ay maligtas. But the gospel says, you can never do anything. Your best effort is just filthy rag in the sight of God. Jesus Christ was the one who did it once and for all at the cross of Calvary. He took the passive and active obedience at the same time at the cross of Calvary. The, past, the, the active obedience says that the law must be obeyed. The command must be obeyed. We did not, we failed to actively obey because we disobeyed the law. And so Jesus Christ actively obeyed it for us. But there is still passive obedience required because all sin must be paid for, must be atoned for. It's not by our atonement, but by the atonement that Jesus Christ did at the cross of Calvary. No more, no less. Tayo po ay manalangin. Salamat po Panginoon sa umagang ito. Medyo may kahirapan ang pag-aaral namin on the covenants. But, O oh Lord, we believe that as long as it is exalting the person and work of Jesus Christ, we can never go wrong. We, can, we may not be able to understand all of the accessory or all of the details about your covenant with sinful humanity by your grace and by your grace alone. 
But what's important is that the person and work of Jesus Christ is highlighted. He alone is the mediator of the new covenant. It is by His blood alone that all of our sins will be totally washed and totally cleansed. It is by His perfect righteousness obedience that we can be treated as 100% ob obedient people of the law. It's not our obedience, but Christ's obedience. And help us to fix upon the person and work of Jesus Christ. Ito po ang aming samo at dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.